Hello everybody and welcome to your first tutorial on making a platformer using C Sharp and XNA. So I know this is a tutorial you've been all looking forward to for a long while, so here it finally is. Now just to let you know, uh normally for my other tutorials I normally have it planned out like I'll make uh, I'll like normally uh try to type the code and then I'll and I'll delete it and then I'll retype it out for the tutorial. But this time, in this tutorial, it, it's it's just freestyling. Okay, so uh, basically, I'm gonna be going off the knowledge that I know and and whatnot. So, but this should this should be a good course for you guys. Um, going over some advanced topics. Uh, but for to be honest, I'm not gonna make this. It's gonna be advanced, but it's not gonna be professionally advanced to the point where uh. It's, it's so confusing to the average uh, person, right? I'm trying to make this for like the the kind of the beginner to intermediates for those of you who don't know where to get started or how to handle certain things in your program. Uh, this is for you. Now, for those XNA users, you might notice on the App Hub that they do have a code for an Lego platform. I mean, not Lego for an XNA platformer. Uh, we're not using any of that code, okay? We're not using the game state example. We're not doing anything. We're not using any other code. This is all custom code, right? And uh, the reason why I'm I'm saying that is because you can always use that as a reference if you want, but it's always good to learn different methods on how to do certain things in your programs. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. So what we're going to do is we have to create a new project and uh click windows game and we're going to save this as xna platformer okay so once we do that what we want to set up now is you want to set up the game state and what game state is is that it's it's basically transitioning from different screens so for example have you ever noticed in games how like they have a splash screen at the beginning and they have um then they have a title screen like doing to new game load game options etc all those stuff and they have the gameplay screen they have a pause screen uh they have different types of screens so that's what we're setting up uh, in this tutorial and this might span uh two or three tutorials not uh I don't know how long it's going to take but we're going to set up a screen manager class and uh there's going to be a lot of things going on with it and the layout, the method I'm going to be using to do it, if you watch my game development tutorials, well, my game development videos, uh, there's seven of them so far. I'm going to be using the same method on how I, I set up the screen manager and stuff like that, so you'll know exactly how I handle it. So, first of all, what we want to do is we want to, sorry, we need to create a class, okay? Uh and uh you can do it by clicking i think alt c um alt shift and c and the class name we're going to name it so let me move this up and move this down into view okay so what we're going to name it is we're going to name it screen manager so we're going to have a class called screen manager and we need another class called uh it's going to be called game screen and we're going to make these public. So the screen manager is going to handle all the screens and the modules that we're going to have. And I'll explain what modules are later. And uh, the game screen is going to be like an abstract class. So it's going to, uh, yeah, it's an abstract class. We're going to be having a bunch of virtual methods in order for the other classes to distribute. And you'll see why we do this later. So what we want to do now is we want to have public, we want to make this public virtual void and initialize. So we have initialize function. Uh, okay. We want to have a public virtual void load content. And before we even do that, we need to add in the what quad files we need. So we need the Microsoft XNA dot framework. Uh, we're going to need the content, we're going to need the graphics, and later on when we make the inputs uh, manager class, we're going to need input. So we have graphics and input. 
Okay, so for the content manager, we're gonna have a for low content, we're gonna have our content manager. We're gonna name that content, and for the updates, for the update, we're gonna have the game time, and lastly, uh, we're gonna have a draw function. Now, uh, before I continue, uh, some of you might be asking how I'm going to be posting the uh, the source code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, whenever we finish a class or something like that, or whenever we finish like a, a complicated class or something, uh, or any type of class, I'm going to be posting it on the on the website, right? As for source code. So, after this tutorial you should see the game screen dot cs class on the on the website if you want to download it and once you're done the screen manager you'll be able to download the classes individually and when the whole project is done then you'll be able to download the whole project as well okay so we have our we have our game screen set up okay so w this is an advanced platformer series so we want to make it professional so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a new class and we want it to be a splash screen okay and what a splash screen is is uh if you notice like when they make certain games whatever uh they show which company made the game etc etc at the before they even show the main menu so that's what a splash screen is so the splash screen is going to you can consist of anything you want but in this uh, uh in this tutorial i'm just gonna make the splash screen say like coding made easy or something like that or something else but you can you can make the splash screen do anything you want and what we're going to do is we're going to inherit from the game screen class. Uh, so before we continue, like the last but not least, because it's seven minutes now, we want to kind of set up our variables for the screen manager class. Okay, so one thing that we'll need is we'll need a list or actually we'll need a dictionary of, of screens, of the, our game screens. And we'll call this screens. And what a dictionary is, a dictionary is kind of like we put in our thing right here and this locate uh this is what we reference it as. So for example, if my screen is a title screen and the ident the idea of it is title, then if I'm searching for it, I just have to put in the name title and it will locate that certain screen. Okay. And uh so we'll just put in uh storing uh, the game screens and then so after we need to have a screen stack and I'm not going to get into uh, in depth into what the screen stack is going to be doing now you'll see what it does later but we're going to need a stack of screens what the stack of screens is going to do is that it's going to let us know uh, which screens were open when and in what order so for example once you go from the title screen to uh, say the option screen and then from the option screen to the control options or whatever then what that's going to be stood on top of the stack so when we want to go back to the option screen when we press the X button or the back button or whatever then it's going to take off the control option screen off the stack show us the option screen and then when we go back again it'll bring us back to the title screen uh, so that's what we need so we'll say uh, screen stack and uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to finish all this right now, uh, but we'll continue this in the next tutorial. But we also want to we want to split our code into regions so that it makes it uh, easier when we're editing. So I'll just say uh, variables or declaring variables, whatever you want to name it. So before we end it, what I'm going to do is lastly, I'm going to make a vector. Oh, I didn't even include the things that we need. We need the framework, uh, the content, and we need graphics. So lastly, we need to have a vector two, and we'll set, we'll put dimensions. And what this is gonna do is it's going to be uh, the screen's width and height. So. So I'm going to end the tutorial here since it's nearing 10 minutes, but we'll continue this in the next tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and bye.